decades-long occupation. On the occasion of the Universal Children's Day, Palestinian Foreign Ministry said that generations of Palestinian children have been subjected to terror, injustice, and insecurity by Israel. The ministry said that more than 50 children have been killed and over 900 detained by Israeli soldiers so far this year. It said currently there are some 270 children in Israeli jails who are subjected to torture, solitary confinement, and other inhumane practices. The ministry also urged the international community to uphold its responsibilities toward Palestinian children by holding Israel accountable for its illegal actions. And joining us out of Berkeley, California, is Mr. Paul Lurie, co-founder of the Free Palestine Movement. Hello, Mr. Lurie. Uh, these statistics, that you would think, pale in comparison to the fact that, you know, what it fails to mention is that these kids, from a very young age, realize they are a marginalized citizen living, uh, you know, on an occupied, I mean, having, well, I mean, this is, they realize from day one that they are going to live a subclass type of life on their own stolen land. And that has to be almost, you know, more daunting than the, you know, the, the, the scores that are killed and, the, and the end up in, the, you know, these uh, Israeli prisons. Um, the children, Palestinian children, <clears throat> grow up in a very strong society with very strong uh, familial and social bonds. They grow up in some ways with better mental health than uh, people in Western societies that don't have to uh, be faced with uh, death and uh, destruction raining from the sky all the time. Uh, it's true that, uh, of course, it's when they suffer real trauma uh, during times of warfare, when they lose members of their families and especially close members, then it can be very damaging to their psyche. But let's not forget that when we talk about generations of Palestinian children, some of those generations are grown. They exist and they, they are functional and they function very well, thank you. It's only the society, the economy, that does not uh, uh, function well. And, uh, and so I, I have a lot of confidence. It is possible to destroy the, the, um, the social bonds of a society, but it takes a lot more than what the Israelis have done until now. And you, you mentioned their mental state at, at, from a very young age. But, you know, they don't live the, you, and you compare to kids in the West, but kids in the West, they're not politically, you know, uh, conscious at, at eight years old. But for, unfortunately for a Palestinian kid, from the time he's five or six or seven years old, he has to understand the pol political reality, the geopolitics of where he lives. And, and these are, you know, things, the luxuries, a kid in the West, I mean, you know, he has the luxury of not having to deal with stuff, he or she, with that kind of youth. Yes, these children do, and they, they are facing things that they should not have to face. And um, Israel is actually, in, to a very large extent, targeting the children. It's a way of getting at the families, of, of um, <clears throat> blackmailing the families, of threatening the, the children in order to get compliance from the, the, the parents. But... Um, uh, I, I, I can't imagine that uh, uh, this is going to work. We saw with the case of Ahad Tamimi, for example, that uh, when she went to jail, she was absolutely defiant, and then members her, of her family have been killed and, and maimed as a result of this. She's not giving up, and the result will be a Palestinian society that is ready to, um, to do resistance even more than, than their mothers and fathers are. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Mr. Paul Lurie, their co-founder from the Free Palestine Movement there, joining us out of Berkeley, California.